Hey there, and welcome back to South Park The Stick of Truth. My name is Pete, and today we complete an episode that has quite a few explicit scenes in it. So be warned, even for South Park standards, there might be the occasional disturbing moment coming up. Now it is the evening of day two in South Park, but before we go to bed, we quickly want to go into our inventory and consume a mana potion. You will shortly see why, but for now, with the mana bar filled, we can go to bed. Good night, my little gumdrop. Hope you're enjoying all the peace and quiet in our new home as much as we are. fighting the underpants gnomes and as you can see they are much smaller than we are. Just cause I'm small doesn't mean you can ignore me. And for that reason no matter which attack we choose and even if we fail to execute it entirely, everything we do will result in an instant kill. <laughs> At the same time though we want to drag out this fight for as long as possible. The reason for that is the rebuttal achievement. As you can see here, the gnomes have a tendency to use channel attacks, and interrupting five of those with one of our magic attacks will unlock the achievement. Now a bit inconvenient, the gnome that has just channeled is in the second row. That means we could use the sneaky squeaker for 80 mana to hit him, but that would also hit all the other enemies and end the fight right here. So instead we're going to use couple spell, which allows us to target any single gnome on the battlefield, interrupting the channel attack, taking him out, but not affecting anyone else. As you can see, the attack has now consumed a lot of mana, and with another gnome channeling here, we need to get that back up in a moment. So to start our next round, we will first consume a small mana potion. That brings our reserves back up, and then, because there's no one between us and the enemy, we can use the cheapest magic attack, the Dragon Shout, for 40 mana. This once again instantly takes out the gnome, but it still counts as the second interrupt the channel attack. The last guy here didn't channel and now we really don't have any other choice but to take him out, but don't worry, the next few minutes will give us plenty more opportunities to unlock the achievement. Shit, he's too big! We can't beat him! Well, if you can't beat him, shrink him! Go ahead, warlock! You fucked with the wrong now! Right here we are again, and this time the odds are a bit more even. And because we want to continue where we left off and keep on interrupting channel attacks, our first move will once again be to stock up our mana reserves. With the Jujitsu then, we are able to target only a single enemy, all that without inflicting any damage over time status effects, so we keep our enemy alive for at least one more round, which is very important in this fight. We then have one enemy channeling already, and he's in the first row, making this very convenient for us. And after his companion attacks, the third enemy here also channels, which means for the achievement we now have to take care of two guys. Our mana reserves are sadly not high enough to interrupt with two separate attacks here, even if we were to use a speed potion, so we'll have to use the sneaky squeaker instead, which does interrupt both attacks and brings the counter up to four, however, while also taking out the entire group. Alright, and with that we have picked up the next stage in the main quest line. However, before we continue to defeat the underpants gnomes, let's first do a bit of looting to acquire the gnome gloves and the miners patch, and then we also want to re-equip our outfit because fighting in the pajamas is really not all that suitable. Okay, much better, let's follow the gnomes through the wall. We are now inside of the wall and to not get instantly killed we want to avoid the mouse trap here, so let's carefully go around and then climb up the cables. On the right side here we then have some very important loot including the gnome helmet, while the left side presents us with an excellent opportunity to take out an enemy.
Alright, the rat is defeated and that means we can climb back down, collect our loot and then proceed into the next area, but not before watching a rather interesting cutscene. I just sometimes feel like we should tell him the truth. Why? So we can relive it all in his head? It's better that he can't remember. But if he really has this gift, he, he's going to discover it again on his own anyway. And then they'll try and use him for his gift and he'll become a weapon. They won't stop looking for him. We have to keep everything secret, even from him. I'm so frazzled. Will you just make love to me? Of course I will, darling. Okay, so at this point things slowly start to get a bit more raunchy, but we can't let ourselves get distracted by that. Instead, we can once again climb up some cables here to proceed. We want to go left first, bashing our way through the wood here, and then we can carefully time our approach to get past the electrical fuses unharmed. In the backpack we then find the third and last piece for the gnome outfit, as well as the gnome pickaxe head weapon patch. Continuing into the other direction, we once again meet a group of rats here, but just like in the previous encounter, we can handle this one almost exclusively outside of combat. The rat in the back here can be taken out by dropping a piece of pipe on it, and the other one is conveniently stuck in front of a flame, and you know what that means, it's time for more fart magic. This now leaves only one single enemy for us to take care of, and for a change we actually have to enter combat for this one. However, the whole affair only lasts a few seconds, as we start things off with a jujitsu to stun our opponent, which then allows us to immediately attack again and land the final blow. Once again, we can now do a bit of looting, but the rats don't really have anything interesting on them. So let's proceed down to the right, where the loot is a bit more valuable, as we can find the gnome pickaxe in the backpack in the corner here. And this now already concludes our journey through the wall. Okay, apparently we can now watch this. And not only can we do it, but for the perverted achievement we actually have to do it. For a whole minute. I think you'll forgive me if I slightly speed that up. Okay, here we are, watched our parents have sex for 60 seconds straight, and we're rewarded with the achievement and the desire to take a long shower. Up next, we'll then have another fight with the underpants gnomes, so the second achievement is just a few moments away. See me in the panties. Okay, quickly wanted to share that bit of dialogue with you. Also, because the fight here goes pretty much exactly like the last one. We fill up our mana before we get things going with the jujitsu, which once again leaves two enemies entirely unharmed and ready to channel. And one of them thankfully channels immediately here, so our achievement is already waiting for us in the next round. And for 40 mana, let's once again use the Dragon Shout here. This interrupts the attack but does not take out the gnome for a change. But most importantly, we have just unlocked the rebuttal achievement. From here on out, we can now approach things a bit more aggressively. And let's actually do that here in the next turn with the premiere of the Whirling Doom. A wonderful attack that bounces from enemy to enemy, deals a good amount of damage and also does burning damage in the process. And that burning damage is also enough so that we don't have to attack again here. I really spend more time gathering underpants. All right, and the victory here gives us enough experience points to level up to level 13. So let's quickly spend an upgrade point on the newly unlocked upgrade for the Plagues of Egypt, an attack that we will also get to know in a few moments. Before we continue, business as usual, let's loot the bodies here. And on the second gnome here we find the underpants helmet and the don't tread on me patch, which are the two items that we definitely want to grab. Now before we slide down here at the end and continue, let's quickly open up our inventory. Because once again we want to fill up our mana bar. However, this time we want to fill it over capacity, which is once again needed to unlock another achievement shortly. Got it. 
Okay, boss fight time, and it is actually very important that we are fighting a boss, because up next we will consume another mana potion despite already being at the limit. Okay, seems like we just had a bit of an accident here, but that is exactly what I plan to do, because experiencing the uh, mana overload in a boss battle, that is the requirement for the Irritable Bowels achievement. So, rapid completionist progression here today, at least in terms of the achievements, but this boss fight will actually also be over soon, because really nobody lasts long in this game with 5 stacks of bleeding. And because we're not in terrible danger at the moment, let's get to know the Plagues of Egypt. This is an ability that's not really there to do a lot of damage, instead it inflicts various debuffs, including breaking shields, weakening attacks or inflicting bleeding damage. So uh, we carefully avoided a flying obstacle here. The Warlock once again took a bit of damage in the process, and we're already at a point where we can finish things off. Alright then, here we are, day 3 in South Park and the Defeat the Underpants Gnomes quest is completed. We have now earned the ability to shrink and grow again at will, and we will excessively use that in the second half of the video. But first, let's get another side quest going. Hey kid, since a lot of our best guys are dead by your hand, can you help us collect underpants? We just need a few more to hit our quota. And with that we have just begun the phase 1 side quest, the quest to collect 5 underpants. Now you may have noticed, throughout this playthrough we have already collected the occasional pair of underpants here and there, as most of them can be found in other people's bedrooms. And we actually have 4 of the 5 required pairs already in our inventory. Hey, there's an emergency meeting at the Elven Forest. Alright, looks like the Elven Forest is where we need to go next, but the emergency meeting there will have to wait for a moment. Since we can now shrink ourselves down to gnome size, we now have access to quite a few areas that were previously inaccessible, and so let's take a quick tour through town. I will show you where those locations are, it won't take long, and after that we head over to Carl's house and continue the main quest line. So the first point, as you just saw, is next to the old hobo camp, where we can squeeze underneath a fallen tree to access some treasure. For the next location we then proceed down to the left, past the remains of Jimmy's house, where we can find a small hole in the fence giving us access to a treasure chest. Inside that chest we find not only the witch gloves, but also the Stoley parents' bedroom key, which naturally makes Kevin Stoley's house a few meters down the road our next location. We evade the Nazi zombies out front and head inside, and then we immediately make our way upstairs. We have looted the rest of the house already in a previous episode, so we also go straight past Kevin Stoley's room and head into his parents' bedroom. The loot in this room is not terribly exciting, but you want to at least grab the Federation badge here near the door, but apart from a bit of cash, the other two containers do not provide us with anything substantial. So back down we go, and then also back outside. Here we want to quickly use the fast travel flag in front of Kevin's house, and we'll use that to travel over to the school. Here we can continue down to the left until we reach the path with the rats, and we don't want to interact with them just yet. Instead we can shrink down and inside of the holdout lock here, that is where we can find the avalanche awareness patch as well as the witch robes. We then return to the fast travel flag because our tour through South Park is not yet complete, and the next stop is the post office. Ooh, fast travel dinner. Hey, big nose, you should consider having some work done. 
Instead of heading into the post office though, we go into the red building to its left, where we can once again shrink down and then crawl into the vent, which not only gives us access to another Chin Pokemon, but also to the way onto the roof. Hi, I'm abandoned, waiting to ambush rich adventurers and steal their gold. Please don't tell on me. After befriending Leroy Mullins, we can then head back down, and heading down is also what we will do once we're back outside of the building, because up next we will once again climb down into the sewers. As always, we need to use our alien probe to teleport across the gap here, and then our journey continues downwards where we will make a quick stop in two locations. Our first destination is in the direction of Mr. Hanky's house, but we actually want to go a bit past that until we reach this small hole in the wall here. We can once again shrink ourselves down to crawl through, and that way we can find a toolbox with a nice amount of cash and a shit nugget. Back out and back towards the entrance we go, but instead of heading back out we will cross over to the right here, which once again leads us to a small hole in the wall. This time we find a small hidden bag, containing once again some cash and a shit nugget, but also the burning skull patch which we don't want to miss. And that is already all we can do down here, so let's fast things forward until we're back on the surface. The next stop is then the post office itself, where for a change we won't make use of the gnome form. If you ever want some work done on your nose, see Dr. Tom. Instead, we can now access Chef's old PO box with a key that we grabbed in the school, I believe, and that gives us access to the iron skewer patch, and we also get a bit of cash on top. Now we want to continue down to the right until we reach the bank, because it is finally time to make a withdrawal. Shrinking down, we can access the area behind the counter, which not only allows us to loot the bag over here, but also to pick a fight with the bank teller. Big mistake. With our buddy Stan back in the party, we can take care of this fight without taking a single point of damage. The key to that is to simply start off by stunning the opponent with the Jiu-Jitsu. In the second round of combat, we can then use the Sling of David, and then let Stan take care of the rest. Oh, ha! oh my god, we killed the enemy! And now as we loot the body here, we can help ourselves to the sum of $90, 30 more than we invested in our three trips to the bank, so in the end, putting the money in the bank did work out for us. Stop staring at me. It's creepy. Once again, our way leads us down to the right and I will slightly speed things up here again, because it is a long way and fast travel points are not really conveniently placed here. Ultimately though, we end up in front of the house next to Mr. Slaves. And as you can see here, the garage didn't quite open, and while it did count towards the Parchaeologist achievement, we haven't really had a chance to go inside yet. Shrinking down to gnome form changes that, and we can finally loot the backpack inside. The next destination is then thankfully a bit closer by, as we just have to go up the road here to the U storage facility. Once again, we avoid being ambushed by Nazi zombies outside, while inside the building here we can sneak behind the counter and grab ourselves a wig from a Terence and Philip lunchbox. From the U storage facility, we then make our way over to the farm at the northeast end of town. You might remember this place from a few episodes ago when we stopped by with Jimmy. The remains of our fight with the Nazi zombie cows are still visible here, but our object of interest is in the back of the barn, once again only accessible after shrinking down in size. Now our tour has almost come to an end though, there are only a few more spots that we need to visit before we can go back to the elven forest. Before we do though, we once again want to pass by the U storage facility and head down a bit further to the left until we reach the bench in front of Tweak Brothers Coffee. Coffee. 
Underneath the bench, we can find the Witch Hat, completing the Witch Outfit. And we can also get our hands on another Chin Pokemon. If I'm not mistaken, this is number 26 of 30. How many car crashes have you been in? For the last time, we then head back to the U storage facility, this time to use the fast travel flag in front of it, and we'll use that to get over to Cartman's house. How may I be of service? Got some pretty good word here. With the huge pile of money that we have collected over the past few episodes, we can now completely empty out Scott's armory, buying every single weapon, every single patch, and every single piece of equipment he has available. Eventually, we will need all of this anyway for the full arsenal achievement. Alright, we spent about $200 here, and there is actually an achievement in the game for spending $500, the Make It Rain achievement, but I don't think we have reached that point quite yet. We have, however, reached the point where we can finally make our way over to Kenny's house. Conveniently, though, we have two more points of interest right on the way. I'm using stealth. You can't see me. I've been discovered! You must teach me to see as you do, human! The first one is Bradley here, who gives us another friend request, and up next we want to go into Stan's house because I forgot something the last time I was here. Now, the upper floor of this house is a bit different compared to the other ones, as it has another door on the opposite side of the wall that we see here, a door that I completely missed the last time I was here. Behind it is a very important room though, because we are now in Stan's parents' bedroom, where among other things we can find the last pair of underpants. Now that we have grabbed those, we can turn in the phase 1 side quest with the gnome in our room, but that has to wait because we have an emergency meeting to attend in the Elven Kingdom. So, let's head over to Carl's house and see what all the fuss is about. Ah, Commander Douchebag has decided to bless us with his presence. Let's get started. Humans and Elves of Zaron, a great evil has descended upon us. After researching last night, I believe we are facing a threat to our entire world. Clyde's Fortress of Darkness is over four stories tall. So far, he has recruited at least 50 warriors to be on his team, and he is... You have something to say, wizard? Uh, nothing. Just think it's kind of funny how drow elves in the Middle Ages can use PowerPoint. You guys, this is serious! Clyde is attempting to raise an army of darkness. I believe he is messing with something he cannot control. He has recruited many of our friends, and so... Our only hope is for our two factions to join forces. Fuck that. We do not team up with fucking elves. You got a better idea, wizard fat ass? After what you elves did us at the Battle of Wormsley Woods, you think we'll ever trust you? Yeah, you, you tell a butter that that was Jimmy's fault and he apologized. Oh, oh, we're apologizing now. How about we apologize for breaking the rule about using arcane fire magic? Yeah. Hey, that was the human's rule, not ours. Join forces, my paladin ass. Only good elf is a dead elf. Why don't you t t suck my elven dick, butters? Enough! Whether we are human or elfins are gonna matter one bit if all of Zaron is taken over by German zombies. We saw what that green stuff does. We better figure out a way to stop Clyde or there won't be a world to fight in. Even if we join forces, we don't have enough warriors. So we recruit more factions to join us. The Pirates, the Federation, and the girls. The girls? Kyle, the girls are not gonna fucking play with us. Yeah, dude, we can't convince girls to do this. No, but maybe the new kid can. The new kid has a power we have yet to understand. He makes friends on Facebook faster than any we have seen. He is really good at getting Facebook friends, I'll give him that. Find a way to get the girls to side with us, Commander Douchebag. I'll deal with the other factions. The rest of you, return to your stations and prepare for war! Huzzah! Alright, here we are with a new quest on our hands. The alliance between the elves and the humans has not really come to fruition yet, but that won't stop us from recruiting more kids to our cause, and this time we have our eyes set on the girls. And whether we succeed or not, that is something we will find out in the next episode. Until then, as always, leave a thumbs up if you like this one, let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions or ideas, and of course, if you want to support the channel, then go ahead and subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.